my name is Daniel Oson. I'm now in Spain to help uh, some good people to start a uh, violin workshop. Uh, they are not professionals, but they are trying to develop the children for their intelligent, uh, the love for the music, the brains. I think it's a very good idea. That's why I've come here. Uh, why I'm here is because that I met someone uh, from the church. Uh, it's a sister. Uh, she's not a professional, but she bought this uh, white violin and uh, unfinished, semi-finished violin. Then she started to do the work by herself. She started trying to put on the varnish. She tried to put on the fingerboard, the pegs, the bridge, and the sun post, everything by herself. That's why I'm so much deeply touched by the, the courage someone would do this work. It really demands professional skills, but for someone with not, without uh, professional training, will be able and uh, to do the job is really something we should encourage. Uh, it also tells all the professionals, the violin teachers, uh, violinists, you can do the same work if you want to. That's why I come here, not trying to help the professionals, but help the amateurs who love music, who love the violin. Okay, we, the next I want to talk about violin is the violin, some people say, oh my violin is very cheap, it's very bad. Actually, good violin, bad violin, expensive violin, cheap violin, and a good condition violin, a bad condition violin is two different things. A violin can be very expensive, very good, but in bad condition. On the contrary, a cheap violin can be also in good condition, will be easily played. As I said, a very good violin, expensive violin, if it is not in a good condition, it is not playable. Cheap violin, if it is set up correctly, will set up. Set up is good, it is playable. Here, I'm trying to help the sister here for all the children's violin. Of course, they are very cheap factory made violins. To set up in a good condition, which the children will be able to play, will be enjoyed playing. That's why I'm here for. For this violin, it's not in the bad handwork. The handwork is good. Uh, the wood is also good. The material is also good. I think it, this is a decent violin. But as I said, the sister did the work by herself. So I can see uh, a lot of work is required more professionally corrected. Uh, first of all, the fingerboard. The fingerboard is not well placed. We can see some edge here, edge here and here. The knot is not well set. The knot is too wide and the angle is, is too sharp. If you play like this, you will hurt your fingers. So today, the first thing I want to do, I will help the sister to fix the fingerboard in a correct position. It's the first thing to do with this violin. And after that, I will do the sound post. I will teach her to do the bridge. I think uh, the screw may be a little, little, a little bit uh, adjustment. Uh, after that, the varnish. It is still not completely varnished, but I wouldn't borrow so much about that. When we have the varnish material, you can do it any time you want. After 10 years, 20 years, it's not uh, immediate need. Uh, the most important thing is to set this violin into a 
standard professional uh, condition. You please take off all the strings. Please sit, sit, please sit on the weapon. Yes, yes. Yes. You take take off all the strings. Okay. Yes. Now we must uh, do not to damage the violin. We have to cover the violin before you do any work. We use a container to put all the parts in so we are not lose them. Yes. Yes, everything in and afterwards uh, easy to find. Uh, for the fingerboard work, we can use a scraper. But I, if you don't have tools, you can also use a ruler to scrape the fingerboard. Yes. And now we got the fingerboard off. We reset the fingerboard again from the beginning. It's moving. Yeah, moving. First clean it. First clean the whole thing. Take all the glue away. Maybe. Yeah. You can see. I found the fingerboard, uh, this is too much wood here. So we have to scrape a little bit more on this in order to fit the violin perfectly. Now I can see the middle is touched and the side is a little open. I check. The violin. Yes, maybe we can bend this a little bit here. What I do is that I use an alcohol, alcohol lamp and apply a little water on the fingerboard and I try to bend a little bit. I just put a little water, this is ordinary water, and apply here. Make it wet. Then light up, please. Mm. Then I use the light alcohol lamp. It's just like uh, you you're working on a bow. Same like uh, you you bend a bow. Bend a bit like this. But you have to be very, very careful not over use your power in order not to break the neck, to damage the violin. Just do a little by little.
Now I see they fit much better. And I do a little bit more. Then it fits perfectly. Okay, now we can work on the glue now. Uh, let's call it today. Today we just uh, fit up a new fingerboard and we continue the work tomorrow.